Greetings, bookworms, and welcome to the Bearded Book Club's production of Aborson by Garth Nix. If you want to follow along in this and all of our productions, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all new videos as well as when we do our live shows. If you would like to support Bearded Book Club, you could do so in two ways, both of which are listed in this video's description. Number one, you could become a patron and support us on a regular basis. Or number two, you can go to our Amazon wish list and send us a book as a one-time donation. This series is made possible by Cody Nimrod, who did just that and sent us this novel. So without further ado, let us continue. Epilogue Nick stood in the river and watched with interest as the current tugged at his knees. He wanted to go with that current to lie down and be swept away, taking his guilt and sorrow with him to wherever the river might go. But he couldn't move because he was somehow fixed in place by a force that emanated from the patch of heat on his forehead, which was very strange when everything else was cold. After a time that could have been minutes or hours or even days, for there was no way to tell whether time meant anything at all in this place of constant gray light, Nick noticed there was a dog sitting next to him, a large brown and black dog with a serious expression. It looked kind of familiar. "'You're the dog from my dream,' said Nick." He bent down to scratch it on the head. Only it wasn't a dream, was it? You had wings. Yes, agreed the dog. I'm the disreputable dog, Nicholas. Pleased to meet you, said Nick formally. The dog offered a paw, and Nick shook it. Do you happen to know where we are? I thought I... Died, replied the dog cheerily. You did. This is death. Ah, replied Nick. Once he might have wanted to argue about that. Now he had a different perspective and other things to think about. Do you... Did they... The hemispheres... Oranus has been bound anew, announced the dog. It is once again imprisoned in the hemispheres. In due course, they will be transported back to the old kingdom and buried deep beneath stone and spell. Relief crossed Nick's face and smoothed out the lines of worry around his eyes and mouth. He knelt down beside the dog to hug her, feeling the warmth of her skin in sharp contrast to the chill of the river. The bright collar around her neck was nice, too. It gave him a warm feeling in his chest. Sam and... and Lirael, asked Nick hopefully, his head still bowed close to the dog's ear. They live, replied the dog, though not without scathe. My mistress lost her hand. Prince Samoth will make her one, of course, of shining gold and clever magic. Lyrael Goldenhand shall be forever after, Remembrancer and Aborsen and much else besides. But there are other hurts, which require different remedies. She is very young. Stand up, Nicholas. Nicholas stood. He wavered a little as the current tried to trip him and take him under. I gave you a late baptism to preserve your spirit, said the dog. You bear the charter mark on your forehead now, to balance the free magic that lingers in your blood and bone. You will find Charter, Mark, and Free Magic both boon and burden, for they will take you far from Alchester, and the path you will walk will not be the one you have long thought to see ahead. What do you mean? asked Nick in bewilderment. He touched the mark on his forehead and blinked as it flared with sudden light. The dog's collar shone, too, with many other bright marks that surrounded her head with a corona of golden light. What do you mean, from far from Alchester? How can I go anywhere? I'm dead, aren't... I'm sending you back, said the dog gently, nudging Nick's leg with her snout. So he turned to face towards life. Then she barked, a single sharp sound that was both a welcome and a farewell. Is this allowed? asked Nick as he felt the current reluctantly release him, and he took the first step back. No, said the dog, but then I am the disreputable dog. Nick took another step, and he smiled as he felt the warmth of life, and the smile became a laugh, a laugh that welcomed everything, even the pain that waited in his body. In life, his waking eyes looked up, and he saw the sun breaking through a low, dark cloud, and its warmth and light fell on a diamond-shaped patch of earth where he lay, safe amidst ruin and destruction. Nick sat up and saw soldiers approaching, picking their way across an ashen desert, Sutherlings followed the soldier, their just-scrubbed hats and scarves bright blue, the only color in the wasteland. A white cat suddenly appeared next to Nicholas's feet. He sniffed in disgust and said, I might have known. Then he looked past Nick at something that wasn't there and winked. 
before trotting off in a northerly direction. The cat was followed a little later by the wary footsteps of six people who were supporting the seventh. Nick managed to stand and wave, and in the space of that tiny movement and its startled response, he had time to wonder what all the future held, and think that it would be a much brighter than the past. The disreputable dog sat with her head cocked to one side for several minutes, her wise old eyes seeing much more than the river, her sharp ears hearing more than just the gurgle of the current. After a while, a small, enormously satisfied rumble sounded from deep in her chest. She got up, grew her legs longer to get her body out of the water, and shook herself dry. Then she wandered off, following a zigzag path along the border between life and death, her tail wagging so hard the tip of it beat the river into a froth behind her. We hope you have enjoyed this production of Aborson by Garth Nix. If you enjoyed this book, please show the author support by buying a copy of this novel. A link where you can purchase a copy is listed in the description of this video. Until next story, bookworms, God bless you.